The featured match is over, TJ. But it's time for Frodan's featured match. It's Strife Goat versus Firebat, a matchup that's been happening since 2014, back when the uh, Invitationals and the Opens were starting to converge. And then in 2015, it happened all the time. It was yep. after Firebat won the World Championship. People were inviting all these players. Strife Goat was on Cloud9. Firebat was on Team Archon. Uh, they were two of the most prominent teams in Hearthstone around then. And uh, it was it was some good times back and forth. And now in 2019, they meet again. But TJ, it's not as simple as that. No. You heard Bloodface's commentary on Spicy Decks. Uh, Firebat bringing the deck of the day, Highlander Warrior, to the table. Strife that, Crow. That's, oh, that is that was the deck of the day, yeah. Strife Crow bringing Mech Paladin, Aggro Warrior, Reno Hunter, Druid. A no priest lineup. Woo -hoo -hoo. And. Even if he did bring a no priest, he brought an aggro warrior. He's is he the only player to bring Reno Hunter this weekend for Americas? He is. He's the only player to bring Hunter, which also blows a little bit of my mind. And then uh, an, an aggressive warrior strategy, which I feel like has been failing a lot on broadcast. In fact, it's gotten so much bad press from the players. Uh, that overall, people just laugh and mock people who bring Aggro Warrior. If we look at the post patch for season two matchup win rates, Aggro Warrior hasn't won a single game, TJ. Yeah, that's kind of brutal. It, it, actually, it didn't win anything pre patch. Yeah. No. Aggro Warrior, prior to this week, is 0 and 6 in Grandmasters. This is the day that it all turns around for Aggro Warrior, Dan. Uh, you're telling me. Today's that the day. This day in history. <laughs> From the future, Strife Crow got the first and the last win ever the only. In, in Grand Masters with Aggro Warrior. That would be quite an accomplishment because apparently it's what so in the difficult world? Sorry, I got to get a win with Aggro Warrior. Some may say that Strife Crow could be clowning around. Or is it perhaps his opponent, Firebat, who is wearing a pair of very luscious mini mouse ears you know Shrifeco I don't think he's expecting Highlander Warrior but I don't think he's expecting Firebat cosplays no to be fair neither was I and it it gave me a fright why is it a fright I just wasn't expecting it he had a mustache on Omnistone like three days ago yeah and now he's wearing mini masks. What's he wrong with that? And then he shaved it. It looks like it looked like it was coming in nicely. And then he shaved it and put on mini mouse ears. Yeah, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. It was just surprising. TJ, are you comfortable with your sexuality? Yes. Good. So I've, am I. I've worn mini mouse so ears. So let Firebat, on many a grown occasions. ass man, wear whatever he wants to wear. He's allowed to, but uh, but I'm but. just surprised. That's all I was saying. I thought I'm not. So he had this, this good for you, Firebat. He had this interesting facial hair going on on when was it? Wednesday, Thursday? It was on Thursday. Uh, for Omnistone? Yeah, he had like the it was the makings of like this this cool like trucker stash almost like admirable 2014 mustache before the beard pre beard. Oh, we don't talk about those times. We don't talk about those times. Admirable doesn't talk about those times. But he it looked like he was growing in something really unique. So when I expected his his cam today, I expected like this weird, maybe even like pseudo handlebar trucker mustache kind of thing, some hipster thing going on. And I got hit with Minnie Mouse ears. And Dan, I've worn Minnie Mouse ears many occasions in my life. My parents live in Florida. They have, they've had season passes to Disney World for pretty much and my entire adult life. TJ, don't throw your moral licensing around me. Just because you grew up around Disney World doesn't mean that you're anti-Disney. I get it. I grew up around Disney World, Look. and now I live around Disneyland. I am, I am all in. If on a Hearthstone Disney. pro gamer decides that he wants to wear mm. a polka dot bow tie on top of his head while he plays in what is considered to be the highest form of competition in competitive Hearthstone, then let him. Let me put it this way, Dan: If he had worn Mickey Mouse ears, I also would have been surprised. Why? Because there's ears on his head. What's wrong with that? Because I expected facial hair, and I got ears. Ears tend to be on heads, TJ. Just how ears work. Ears don't tend to be on top of your head and made out of plastic. 
Well, maybe Firebat is celebrating his 2014 accomplishment because BlizzCon is at the Anaheim Convention Center, and Bl and Firebat was uh, an unshaven 18-year-old in cargo shorts. No, he was. Wait, yeah, he was. He was unshaven, huh? So it's uh, it's a blast from the past. So you're saying he should have facial hair with the ears? Yes. So you were also surprised. No, all right. I'm case, saying that case Firebat. Firebat is uh, preemptively showing us what is yet to come. It's a throwback to world champion Firebat. So next, it is prime. So next, you may not like it, TJ, but this is what peak performance looks like. So next week Let it's going to be think. ears plus. Like a scraggly facial hair. There's only one way to find out, and that's to ask Firebat when he gets this victory. Okay. In the meantime, a lot has happened. Uh, Strife Crow has developed his secret keeper. In fact, actually, the entire uh, game history has been on that match history bar. I so to recap it for all the people that want play-by-play -play commentary. Uh, Strife Crow sets up the early secret, secret Keeper and plays the secret, and then Firebat kills it. Now, going into turn three onward, Strife Crow actually does pick up a pretty important curve, which is the Ursatron into the mechs. There's only one other mech in the deck traditionally for Reno Hunters, which is Snip Snap. And if you can curve out into it, you might be able to put up reasonable pressure. I've played against this deck a handful of times, and the number one thing that makes it really difficult for the Paladin is to handle uh, a secret curve. And um, what ends up becoming really tricky is handling uh, Subject 9 and Bran and Siamat and all these other different temple tools that they have. If Hunter gets that, you often die. But if, you, if they don't get it, they miss a turn or two, you're often in an okay spot. Rat Trap also very annoying. One of the hardest parts for Paladin is hand management. If you're limited to two cards a turn, it can... Uh, it can get brutal real quick. Yeah. Some great pickups for Strife Crow here. Yeah, I would say that the most important thing is to generate damage. Just, just imagine Firebat is missing eight life right now. So start counting down from 20. You can push three, develop Snip Snap. What does that look like? That means that you're somewhat weak to a Consecration, but you still have two damage afterwards, and you can Ziliax afterward, uh, on the follow-up. Seems good to me. Trade the one damage. It's totally fine as well. Yep. Keeping the Snip Snap on the board post AOE is also important. So Firebat picks up Prismatic Lens. I think that's a really important card, too, to play right uh, now. But it looks like Firebat instead is prioritizing having Presence on the board. Uh, part of the reason why I think Prismatic Lens is good, because it guarantees draws a spell that you might need. Uh, spells tend to be more important than the minions in this matchup until you really need the minions, like Shrivala. Yeah, there's always the risk of drawing Shrivala, but at this point, you know, there's still so many minions left in the deck for Firebat that it's a pretty low low likelihood. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, this is not necessarily a matchup where you need all of the, the damage, like double Holy Wrath. Um, sometimes it can be. Right. But very rarely. I mean, I'm also a proponent that uh, prismatic, like getting a little bit more expensive stuff out of your hand is usually better. So that way the cheaper thing could be played in uh, a more convenient way. Because if you have a bunch of fours, that means you can only play two of them in a turn. But if you have like a bunch of twos, you can play one to like five of them. Yeah. yeah no. it, just, it just gives you more play. But the thing is, uh, Blade Mage Thanos is a slow form of card draw. You need it to die. So I think Firebat's like, okay, I'm going to contest the board a little bit, and also I need to get this card draw out of my hand. So I understand it. And it even ends up working out somewhat okay, because now the Blood Mage Thanos gets to benefit off the, the Hammer Wrath spell damage. Yeah, and he can clean up some of the board here. Problem is, every little bit of damage that he... Uh, yeah, this is the scary part. Like, Hunter's already put off, put on enough pressure where Bran, on turn seven, 
could end up just forcing Firebat to constantly be in a state where he needs to time out. And this is like the one window where win uh, Hunter has to close the game. And it's pretty scary. This is nine damage upstairs. This lethal over two turns? It is. And that that's that's the part of the reason why I feel like this Hunter deck gives this Paladin deck some trouble. Yeah. Uh, waves of pressure. Uh, you're never in a situation where you're mm -hmm. truly safe. Right. And that's also why we were talking about the Ursatron Stim Stap Zilliax curve. Yes. Because that, that is a very powerful way to have board presence. And Brand Mass or Dino Tamer Brand, excuse me. Brand Master Brand. <laughs> Brand Master Brand. Which makes sense. Because in order to master something as wild as King Crush, you must first master yourself. Dan, that was so wise. But at the same time so unwise. Well done. Putting Firebat down to 10. Firebat chooses to Consecrate and pass. He is dead. He can now, Flash of Light Consecration. Yes, Flash of Light does put himself outside of that range. But then, what kind of quality of life is that, Dan? One where you don't die. Barely holding on. That's good enough for me. Outside of King Crush and Kill Command, there's actually not too much direct damage that the Hunter deck does outside of his hero power. Believe Zephyrus. it or not. Yeah, Zephyrus and Eagle Horn Bow, but those aren't like the traditional ways that you think about direct damage. Yeah, I mean, there are some conditional direct damage, like Unleash the Hounds. Um, you swinging with this weapon? Uh, you don't really need to, but mm -hmm. at the same time, because there's no other weapon in the deck, I believe, from Strife Crow. But at the same time, is there any way that you can get punished for not swinging? Yeah, there's not even a Hunter's Pack. Mm -hmm. So there's no weapon and no way outside of Zephyrus into Tyrion or True Silver that could generate a weapon. Right. Or Gore Howl or Arcanite Reaper, Fire War X. Zephyrus can generate a lot of weapons, actually. Yeah, Prismatic Lens and Timeout looks like to be the play here for Firebat. Doesn't have a way to deal with the King Crush. Finds Shervala and Equality. Shavala being the hand is not a bad thing, given that he has Baleful Bankers. So the play, so he's going to time out. The play next turn, Shavala, Baleful Banker. Soup Vendor, maybe? Soup Vendor. But he needs a way to actually kill off the King Crush. Oh, and the quality going out at 25 is also a really bad thing, because I'm pretty sure yeah. he could have utilized it. Well, Shavala can deal most of the damage to the King Crush. Sure. So you, you could find one more. You like. could Shervala, Holy Wrath, and deal with the King Crush that yeah. way. Yeah. Or picks up Elven Archer, something along those lines. Pyromancer, perhaps. Yep. Also that. No, Pyromancer doesn't have a card that I can combo with. Oof. That's a good draw. That is a very good draw. Because it's still developing on the board, so it you know kind of wants to force out removal from Firebat. I mean, the King Crush almost alone uh, is enough to force out removal, but it's also second through your deck, and you can dictate uh, you know the secret that you play and what Firebat needs to play around. Some mind games that go into it. At this point, Rat Trap seems super appealing because in order for Firebat to get back into this game, he's going to have to do a lot of things. He's going to have to clear the board and gain life, and in order to do that, he's going to have to play a lot of cards. So Rat Trap looks incredibly appealing. I wonder if Freezing Trap is Ooh, here too. Yeah, that's... Freezing Trap actually... Yeah, Shrefa was going to realize that his only way to really come back into this is Shervala. Because he needs a burst of healing as well as board clear, which Shervala kind of acts as both. Pistol Smith Kangor sees no snipe. Shavala, how much is it going to cost after the freezing trap? I don't think enough spells have been played. Moment of truth. Doesn't want to do it. He knows how bad it can be. And Shrivala I mean, costs it still costs two? 27 to 7. Oh. Just a little bit too expensive. No other spells he can play here. Yep. 
just dead. Move quickly. Ah, just not enough time for Firebat. The Reno Hunter the getting the job done. This is a deck that I think is criminally underrated by a lot of the uh, European and America's grandmasters. I think Reno Hunter is a lot better than people give it credit for. Yeah, it's got a lot of good matchups in the current metagame, uh, but it also has some poor ones, and it is a little bit of an, uh, can sometimes be an inconsistent deck. Obviously, Highlander decks, uh, by nature, are inconsistent, um, at least if you have like a specific card game plan. Yep. Uh, but, you know, just the hero power, secrets, throw Paladin off their game plan, don't allow them to draw cards fast as they want, puts them under constant pressure, and that means Stripeco takes game one. Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have a number two of this best of three. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Legends say powerful treasures are hidden everywhere here in Aldoom. If we hope to defeat Rafam, we'll need as many as we can get. He's already unleashed the ancient plague lords and countless monsters. Keep them distracted, Reno. Not a problem. This plan is totally gonna work. Make that right, Finley. Oh, yes. I, I have them right where I want them. <laughs> there is an artifact here. The name is... Hmm. The Scales of Justice. Oh, it must be really fancy. <laughs> Only to be used in a time of great peril. <laughs> Yes, I think this qualifies. Hey, look, Finley, you've lured one of the Plague Lords. Take this, fiend. Ah. In the face, yeah! Hey, guys, get that treasure. We've got a Plague Lord to destroy. Ah, yes, please, hurry. Not to worry, Finley. We'll just push this thing right here. No, that's a trap. Watch out. It's all good. I am totally tired. Oh. Gracious me! <laughs> what we actually need to do is press this. And there. handsome guy again. My name is James Costasage. My handle is Firebat. My username is based off the StarCraft player Firebat Hero. Uh, I was a fan of him and watched him on Twitch early on in his career and then just named myself Firebat because I thought it was cool. Something about me that people don't know, I really hate spending money. I try and save it whenever I can. I recently learned how to repair a dishwasher so that I didn't have to buy a new dishwasher. I like doing stuff like that. I get a really good sense of accomplishment and pride whenever I'm able to salvage something. My favorite Hearthstone esports memory is winning the 2014 World Championship. That one's pretty tough to beat, but uh, I'm hoping that one day I can beat that memory. Being in Grandmasters, to me, means that I get another chance to prove myself and show that 2014 wasn't a fluke and that I am still here to play. I mean, I love playing against my own region because I get to play against a lot of my friends, which is always like really fun and entertaining and there's so many different mind games. But at the same time, I'd really love to play against Europe and really knock them down a few pegs because they're so cocky all the time. I look forward to winning the most and losing the least. Uh, I definitely don't want to lose uh, and I definitely want to win, so it's really simple.
Firebat versus Strifegrow going on right now as game number one is in the books, and it's a Paladin Mirror coming up next. Uh, Strife Crow and Firebat both bringing the Paladin. Paladin's being very popular, I think. Uh, well, it's not exactly a Holy Wrath Paladin Mirror. There's a twist! It's a Mech Paladin versus a Holy Wrath Paladin, TJ. What is happening in Grandmaster Season 2? Uh, well, what is happening with Strife Crow, particularly in week number four of Grandmaster Season 2? Uh, I don't know. He brought Agri Warrior, he brought Mech Paladin. Crazy. But I'm excited. Uh, we are practicing other matchups, most notably the Warrior uh, on the other side uh, from Firebat versus this Mech Paladin. Because I was curious uh, about how that matchup played out since they're both unique decks. Uh, but Mech Paladin is an interesting archetype in itself. It's got a ton of draw. Players were speculating in the Rise of the Mechs patch that Mech Paladin would be a huge force because of the one mana Christology. Um, you know, giving it so much gas to be able to get through the early game and the mid game. And it does have good matchups against decks that it has time against because it can assemble these massive combos with Glowstone Technician, uh, with uh, the Mechano Eggs and Kangor's Endless Army. Uh, they can make massive boards bigger than you'll ever see in Hearthstone because of all of these, these buffs that they can pile on to single minions. So it's an exciting deck to watch, but it also can fizzle out. Um, if it doesn't get its card draw mechanisms early on in the game, it can you know, be relying on the top of its deck, its combos kind of don't piece together, and it's just playing small mechs and dying. Uh, but it is exciting. Galvanizer. <laughs> is there a... Galvanizing okay. all the peasants. <laughs> and they're thatch roof houses! You do not know what I'm referencing at all. Zero clue. Got it. All right. Explain yourself. It's literally a 90s kids will get that joke. For like the five of them in chat, the rest of you boomers. I wonder. Can go back to the whole bunch of games. Move quickly. It's a, it's a Trogzor reference. It's not even, it's not nowhere near applicable whatsoever. Okay. I'm just going to stop talking. Those are my you favorite know. references, Dan. Ones that are completely irrelevant. Uh, Galvanizer's super powerful. You just Glowtron twice, Bronze Gatekeeper. There's two ways to play this deck. There's the way that you can just curve out like this, and there's the other where you go for the big Glowstone Technician burst. Given that Shrek goes on the coin, I would have been okay with that had he chosen to go for it. So I actually don't know if this Galvanizer is actually that great in this spot. I think I kind of like just the Glowtron Bronze Gatekeeper. Go face. I kind of like a blessing of wisdom here. <clears throat> okay. Before it can be dealt with. So, uh, blessing of wisdom. Let me think. At least one Glowtron, right? Yes. So it doesn't get eaten by Elven Archer. Blessing of wisdom, Glowtron. One Glowtron. Draw a card. You can blessing of wisdom first and trade. Evaluate. Hmm. And then one Glowtron. Bingo. Strife Crow nailed that turn. It's the best Hearthstone play I've seen in years. I believe. Oh, it. what a play. Yeah, because now the Cosology works really well with the Galvanizer in the hand. He's going to pull things like Bronze Gatekeeper, his <laughs> Skater Bot. In fact, it's literally those two cards. <laughs> so now Galvanizer can actually have Rush and attack onto the board. And now he can push with the Glowtron, which is fairly important so that we can get outside True Silver Champion range. Firebat is quite amused. Well, in pain, but also quite amused. For one thing, I think he can appreciate a nice dank deck every now and then. Yeah, I agree. Angor's Endless Army. Strife go get a 2-0 fire bet? I don't know. Still a lot of game left to play. Uh, Strife Crow's hand is decent. This chooser for champion is, is cool. This Galvanizer is gonna about to, is about to pop up a ton. Oh, oh. 
Okay. Uh, that changes thing, things, actually. Uh, it might change it a little bit. So what you can do is you can Bronze Gatekeeper and Hero Power and then Ghost and Technician. Yeah. Then on six, go for Snip Snap, Bronze Gatekeeper, Bronze Gatekeeper plus Snip Snap, and then Endless Army. Yes. So the curve is there. I like uh, one Bronze Gatekeeper to play around like Hammer of Wrath um, as a as a removal option. You still draw a card. You're putting on some pressure. Snip Snap also works. Well, the reason why Snip Snap is kind of a weird thing to interact with on Mech Paladin is because the Death Rattle ends up being fed into the Kangor's Endless Army. Kangor's Endless Army, for people who don't know, it's a 7-man legendary spell from Doomsday Project that revives three mechs that died this game, and it keeps magnetic. And so this is a complete deviation from the curve plan that I thought that was a really logical one. And it could be a nod to a few things. It could be the fact that Shrink Ray is, is a thing. Uh, and you do not want your minions to be shrunk and then, as a result, nullified. Um, this uh, oh, Another thing is Subdue is a real problem, too. This also protects the Galvanizer, which it, it looks like, based on this play, that the most important thing that Shrepko wants from this board is the draw. So if Equality or Shrinker were to come out, Firebat would have to have Elven Archer also to snipe off the Galvanizer. Right, that does make sense as well. And and to interrupt the draw. So it looks like Shrevko is not too happy with his hand at the moment and wants to protect this draw at all costs. That is one thing that I found with the, with the Mech Paladin is that it is sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of times it feels fairly all in if you just go for every magnetized like combination possible. And yes, Stacking the Endless Army is great, but you're up against a deck that can fight against it pretty well. Now, mm -hmm. Glow some Technician on this hand does look pretty spicy, because you get Mechano Egg that's buffed, Bronze Gatekeeper can taunt it up, and then you can force your opponent to clear that egg, and then it'll have an 8-8 afterwards. Shrifeco can also just mm. get him for 11 damage right here, right now. That one seems appealing also. I don't know. There's also argument to getting Mechano Wake developed. It's five mana. Yeah, I don't hate a Mechano Wake in this position, but I think Lost and Technician does something similar to Mechano Wake, which is add latent power onto the board. The idea is that Mechano Wake is an investment for the future turns. So is Glows and Technician. I feel like Glows and Technicians pay off as much better. Yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, a lethal setup. Uh, I believe, because that's 10 damage from hand with yeah, uh, with 8 on board, assuming the Bronze Gatekeeper that is That is scary. That is very scary, and that has to be weighing into Firebat's mind mm. here. You see Glowstone Technician with a lot of cards drawn. This deck is built around the magnetic keyword. Well, that seems like it'd be pretty important. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven. Seven minions in the deck, with six of those being two ofs. So 13 out of the 30 cards in the deck can magnetize onto a mech. Is it time to drop the pyro quality here? You don't have to. Oh, you can instead use Hammer of Wrath to pick things apart mm. and leave the five attack minion on board. Part of me even wonders if Firebat should just have played Timeout and Acolyte, but if he did, he should have played Timeout first to take one extra, one less damage, excuse me. Yep. Oh, Firebat did not get the Subdue off. His track goes one damage off of Lethal. Trifco thinking about how he wants to go about it. Definitely wants to attack with that Galvanizer, but it's not as simple Let as just adding think. damage in. He probably saw the hover on the targeted spell as well. Yeah, he knows the subdue is happening. Which means he knows the subdue is oh, there. That's just the worst. Not only did Firebat not get that spell off, he also gave information to Strife Girl, so Strife Girl's probably feeling like he knows exactly that two-minute card Let is. In the yeah. Yeah. Strafko doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, I think he plays the Mechano Egg. 
Yep. And uh, still with that Zilliax pickup, 10 damage from hand if a mech sticks. So. Uh, oh, not quite because not he, quite. he doesn't have mana. But what he can do is actually Crystology for a second Skater Bot. And then Skater Bot plus Warp Gear is 8 damage from hand. And if Fire Bat deals with uh, the 817 somehow, then the, the egg is going to be able to finish. Yeah, and right. Skater Bot's guaranteed because he's already drawn both Galvanizers, right. both Glowtrons, both Bronze Gatekeeper, and one Skater Bot. So actually Crystology only picks up the second Skater Bot. Seems like Firebat is going for the card draw here. If he doesn't do anything else, doesn't heal in this spot, he is dead. So probably a timeout in Elven. Oh, man, this is difficult, actually. Quickly. So the, the, the challenge is that if Firebat actually Elven Archers this, Trifo is going to summon back the Galvanizer. Well, that's game. That's game. That's the series. Trifo's right? like, oh, uh, what? All right, you're dead. I, I win? Cool. Mech Paladin. Getting the job done. Strifecrow with a crucial victory. Wow. He's at one in five. A defeat here would put him deeper into the hole for a relegation spot. And so getting the job done. I want to tell you a story, TJ. In season one, there was one brave player amongst the sea of other Holy Wrath Paladins to bring Mech Paladin one week, and it was Strife Crow. In a format where you could only play one deck, which was Specialist, Strife Crow for a week decided to bring Mech Paladin, and he went one and one. Once again, bringing back the Mech Paladin and getting a huge W on the board. Yeah, when you're down in a season like this, one and five, tr fighting for relegation, you can go about it two ways. You can keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, or you can change it up. You can change it up, throw a curveball, and you know maybe Firebat wasn't ready for it. Maybe those decks just countered Firebat's lineup, and he was preparing for something else. But whatever it was, it got Strife Grow to a win, yeah. and that's what matters. TJ says you can do something or you can not do it. And whatever happens, either happens or doesn't. Uh, it's words I live by. <laughs> Checking with Strife Grow, who is hot off his victory. Strife, are you there? Yeah, what's up? How's it going? It's great. Going well, going well. So, Mech Paladin, uh, what inspired you to bring this uh, nonsense? But, you know, more importantly, it panned out perfectly. How did that go? I mean, Mech Paladin's the best deck in the game. People just don't know <laughs> about it. So true I just that, bought true. the best deck. It's actually so sick. I, I was playing it um, Thursday on my stream. I got to like top five legend with Mech Pally 2. And I was like queuing against constantly Priest, which is like one of the worst matchups. And I still was just crushing everyone. It's actually really strong. People forgot about it. It's fine. Well, in season one, you were the only player in a specialist format to bring Mech Paladin and take a, a chance on that when other people were playing other decks back then. Uh are you just a Mech Paladin God here in Grandmasters? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I'm actually a Mech Paladin God. That's like my <laughs> kind of deck. Uh, season one was kind of iffy for Mech Paladin just because Mage, right? Mage was so good against it. So I think people kind of forgot about Mech Paladin because of uh, because it was like a meta deck during when Mage was was the king. And now that Mage is gone, it has a lot of free reign now. So. Interesting, interesting. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the micro plays and whatnot. It seemed like you were prioritizing, uh, even separating some of the magnetic, uh, and then even trying to get more card draw with the busted wisdom. Can you just talk a little bit about the mindset of like what you were considering during that turn? Because uh, we have our own theories, but we'd like to hear what was going on uh, during your plays. Yeah. So one of the concepts of Mech Pally is that you always really want to have a mech for next turn so you can magnetize and keep going. Um, sometimes when you go all in on one one mech, the specific thing for one mech there was like subdue and um, shrink ray, right? So I didn't want to just keep making my one big mech, even though that guy had was a snip sap. So at the end of the day, even if he did like subdue it or he couldn't actually kill it, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But the wisdom stuff is like. Wisdom's one of the best cards in that deck. Um, Interesting. Especially especially in that kind of matchup. Wisdom is so good right now because a lot of people are playing like quest decks, which don't really interact until they get their quest completion and they're playing, you know, things like 
Holy Wrath, which doesn't really have a way to kill the mechs early against Wisdom. Um, the new style of mech pally with the faceless stuff is different now. Like, I don't remember faceless being in the deck before, at least it wasn't super common. But it's like so snowballing now because you have the a lot of matchups where they don't interact early and you just buff a mech with wisdom. And oftentimes the mech you're buffing has a rush too. So you faceless that and immediately get more cards. It's actually pretty sick. Yeah, when you break it down like that, it makes the deck sound very scary on paper. <laughs> it's the best deck in the meta. The best game. deck in the game, TJ. Not the in the meta game, in, the, in game. the game. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Strife Crow. Uh, you know, one in five record prior to going into today. Uh, people talk about relegation in every region. How it's become a source of stress. Uh, like Soleil, it seems like you're relatively calm and and chill about it. Do you feel that is the case, or are you just putting on a front for the rest of us? let's see i think like i had some bad series early on in the season where i felt like i really didn't play well and then i feel like it kind of like compounded in a way where then i felt stressed for the next series and then completely like you know continued not to play well um it's like after i was one and five at the end of last week i started to have like realized what's going on you know i think it's like it is kind of a combination of stress but i was working on it a lot this week i didn't actually play that many games of hearthstone this week i was mostly working on my own mental game this week um i've been realizing like i've been like zoned out for like years now like i haven't really had like that kind of lifestyle where my brain is very focused i started doing things like reading books and things like that to try to get my focus back so interesting really interesting there's an article that's put up by uh, i think espn that talks about the preparation that grandmaster chess players do and uh i think it's worth definitely looking into if you're looking to improve your mental game they're talking about how chess players in long form chess tournaments lose 10 to 20 pounds because of the rigorous and long games that they play you know warrior wow. mirrors yeah and uh they talk about their diet and preparation and sleep cycles and everything like that and how uh, chess players used to party a lot in the 80s they were ragers but nowadays none of them party because they're like all meticulously going through mental and physical training yeah it's chess chess is the next keto <laughs> i'm on the chess grandmaster diet <laughs> yeah. all right well uh, strife go thanks for giving us a little insight congrats on your victory and we'll see you back tomorrow no problem bye-bye Strife Crow's second match this weekend. It's up against Nalgi Don, and that's a great way to land a uh, blow against the leader and improve your playoff positionings and also put yourself deeper out of relegation. Tiebreaker points as well. Uh, beating people with high records increases that tiebreaker yes, two true. points. Which is important because, I mean, he, Very important. Just, he could be tied with ETC for the rest of this season. Yeah. ETC is going to be playing later today, so the pressure is 